Hi there. So we got a lot of really cool things in the public beta for DaVinci Resolve 18.5. Uh, we got auto captions. We got uh, text based editing using those auto transcriptions, separate things, by the way. Uh, we got support for USD infusion, at least uh, initial support. Uh, I want to talk a lot more about that later. But in this video, I want to talk about something that a lot of you might have missed, and that is brand new uh, fusion transitions and effects in the edit page. So let's do that. I'm going to show them. I'm going to show them all to you. And this will just be uh, transitions and effects. There are no new titles or generators. But of course, uh, if you want more uh, titles and generators or even effects, I offer you know dozens of free ones over at my website. But we're going to talk. We're going to talk about these new ones right now. Uh, only a small uh, handful of them require the studio version. I will specifically call those out. Uh, let's let's look at all the new stuff. We're starting with transitions, and the first transition we are looking at is this block glitch transition. Let's check it out. Cool, little glitchy, little technical. If I slowly skim through this or, you know, stretch this out so we have a little better view, we have these big uh, color blocks coming in. Then it gets a little, like, pixelated, finer detail, finer detail, and then transitions right into our next clip. Does that entire process back and forth. Pretty, pretty slick. Let's check out the settings in the inspector. We've got a few basic settings, this, like, seethe and frequency aspect for how we are changing the look. Um, of the noise pattern that is driving this effect. You have this really slick color recede option if you want to colorize this in a, in a different way while keeping the same look as the effect. Uh, offset resolution as well for how far we want to go, right? Yeah. How much you want to be visible. Ooh. That's even like a cool, cool sort of like uh, retro wee effect. I might dive back into this one later. Uh, block glitch effect. Really cool. Next, let's check out the circle spin transition. Shoo. Oh, really like all the motion blur on this one. Uh, we have this outer circle, inner circle. Nice. Again, a few basic controls, uh, including uh, the easing on this as well. By default, that's linear. But if I hop this over to easing, set that to something like uh, quad on both of those, it should be a little subtler. Yeah. Oh, it goes in and then out. Ooh, interesting. Maybe I like linear better. Nice, circle spin. Next, we've got the detail dissolve. Now this one does require the studio license, but let's check it out. Ooh, there's some interesting stuff going on. Yeah, this does feel just like a slightly modified dissolve, but uh, the areas with more detail do start to poke through a little bit sooner, and then the rest of the image sort of comes into frame. Uh, it's a nice little subtle uh, effect, but a nice variation on a dissolve for sure. Next, let's check out edgy. Woo! We got some crazy glows. Oh yeah, all around. It looks like the edges of all of these glows out from there, blooms up, then transitions back to the specific edges. Interesting, nice, edgy. This one uh, is free. Again, I'm specifically calling out the ones that aren't. After edgy, we have fold. And hey, I found a bug. Nice. I'll, I'll get to report on a bug in the beta. <laughs> um, uh, if I hop back to the timeline I was going to show this on, check it out. Um, it looks um, wrong and not great. And I believe the main issue we're running into has to do um, with some funky resolution stuff. So I uh, created this timeline 4K, but these clips are 1080. And somewhere in there, things break. If I hop over to a 1080 timeline with those same 1080 clips, then A, that looks like a fold effect that we might be expecting. Fold, it's a nice effect. Um, uh, watch your resolution. And if you run into issues, check your resolution. I will uh, be sending um, a, a bug thing about this. After fold, we have glow. Ooh, nice and subtle. Just like a, a nice glow fade. Um, these clips are very similar, but um, again, separate ones. I'm sure you'd feel that, especially like more like scene transition-y. Oh, that's pretty nice. Kind of like a softer, a softer dip to white. I like that. Glow. Next, we have logo wipe. <laughs> and by default, this logo is just sample text. You can uh, input a logo here. Let me grab my Resolve logo, drop that in there, and then now, oh, 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 I have to say, what I uh, don't use text. <laughs> so we have just that, an interesting like wipe fade here, but with the logo as well, rotating in 3D space. Doo -doo -doo. Nice, nice. I like it. I like it. Uh, we have extra controls for animation and glow, probably on that background maybe as well. Lots of controls here, um, but even if you just want text, um, that's a nice little one. Logo wipe. After logo wipe, mosaic. Let's check it out. Mm, just a real nice little mosaic pixelate one to the other. I like it. It doesn't feel like it dips down and back up. It feels like very much like, yeah, the timing does some interesting stuff, but a nice little uh, mosaic pixelate effect. 
After that, we have multi circle wipe. Oh, yeah, that zoomy circle. Like it, like it. Nice, clean, simple, but hey, lots of stuff like this that people will find. Favorite, use more. I like it a lot. Multi circle wipe. Cool. Uh, radial. Ooh, just nice little, nice little slick spin. I really like the extra motion blur they're, they're tagging on here. Uh, I might dive in later, find, figure out exactly how they're doing that. Because it's it's nice little blur. Oh, it's radial blur. That makes so much sense. It's spinning and extra radial blur on top. Mm, I like it. Uh, next, we have RGB splitter. Ooh, ooh, nice. Neuro. Sort of like uh, like glitchy vibes without like that glitchy texture. Oh, just like, ooh, I like that one. I like a lot of these. RGB splitter. Nice. Uh, in controls. Oh, we do have different scales for those colors. Um, we are getting, if you want to change these. Ooh, ooh, interesting. Mess with this a bit. You could get some pretty exaggerated effects. I like it. I like it. Next, um, another uh, studio only one, that being Shash. Sh Shash. That is hard for me to say. Shash. Let's check it out. Ooh. Oh. Oh, fun. It's just like t uh, I, I might call it like TV static. Maybe that maybe that's maybe that's an Australian term. Shash for for static. Sh static. Shash. Static. <laughs> anyway. Um, yeah, this will, this, uh, I assume is running off of the grain node. Um, also, if you want it black and white, you can just do that. Although color helps the transition quite a bit, um, which is a studio only feature. So that's just like just mostly dipping to that, but a nice little one, bring in some sound effects there as well. After that, we have spin. Oh, wait for that to process, do its deal. That'll be should cache inside fusion. If it doesn't, we can cache that specific effect. Um, this one, uh, I'm guessing, is like in real 3D space, which makes a lot of sense. So if I just hop on my render cache to smart, yeah, it's gonna try to cache all of them, but it'll cache this one first. Going through. Here I am. Showing all video frames to properly cache that. Just a nice little 3D flip. Uh, sort of like my 3D transition pack, which I do want to revisit. I think I can get a lot more performance out of it. Nice. Oh, and hey, we even have little uh, controls. You want it to just spin up. Oh, this is a nice little spin one. You've got uh, extra motion blur, vertical scale. You want it to spin down. This is a nice, pretty comprehensive like 3D spin effect. I like it. I like it a lot. Next, we have stretch blur. Nice, solid, just like stretch it out, blur. Yep, that's what it's called. That's what it does. I like it a lot. Next, tile wipe. Zooms out, zooms back in with those tiling edges. Nice, lots of fun, lots of fun little transitions in there. Um, I like those. I'll be revisiting some of them uh, for sure. Some of them I want to dive in and see see quite what they built on the back end. That's very cool. Uh, let's move on to effects. I said there were a small handful that required studio. Um, those two transitions are the only ones that require studio, and none of these new effects require studio. That's great. That's great. First, uh, two effects are pretty interesting. Those are being these uh, graphic overlays. Um, the first one. Just, you know, makes this little cross. You can hop in, uh, change the, ooh, that's not what I expected thickness to do, but I like it. You know, it's just some cool the extra like shape generator deals. Uh, interesting, this comes in as an effect um, and not in, ooh, not in as a generator, but hey, I like it a lot. Flickr will change those. Um, these are all built in that shape tool inside Fusion. But hey, if you want some cool shape stuff happening right over your footage, we've got that. And then we also have um, this just general shape overlay, um, which yeah, is just mostly a star, although you can change the depth, make it a square, uh, uh, whatever shape this is. <laughs> but those same uh, duplicate options if you want multi though, multiple of those in frame, uh, transform, doing some fun stuff. Ooh, we're doing some like uh, mirroring edges here the thickness, uh, bring it over the fun shape system over to the edit page, I like it. Uh, next we've got the highlight stretch. Now, by default, this does nothing. Um, and that's because it does a whole lot, but it's also a little beefy. So for some of these, and maybe, you know, just the rest of them, I am gonna hop over to that 1080 timeline, see if we can save a little bit of processing here. If I preview that, we got this highlight stretch. And uh, by default, it does nothing, but if I start to pull up this stretch width, just a little bit, we see, wow, 
lots of stuff starts to happen. This is sort of uh, like a fake like pixel uh, shifting, or that's what it's called, pixel sorting, ah, pixel sorting effect. Um, and you can do some real interesting stuff. What does that merge under do? Uh, just different ways to blend these back. This is just width. You can also do height. Ooh, yeah, some of that texture is really nice. Uh, change the length of those as well. Um, this is definitely more of an intensive effect, but you can do some really cool look, uh, looks rather. Um, this is also starting from the highlight. So you see like my chair isn't doing anything right now. Like the mic is coming through fine. You can change the density, lots of different settings to play with. Ooh, ooh, I like some of this. I'm gonna, there's, there's lots of cool stylus, uh, stylistic stuff you can do here. Ooh, just the effect. Ooh, okay. Yeah, um... This feels like something I would really want to bring into Fusion, use as part of a larger effect. Um, maybe some like build some transitions around this. Really, really cool. Really cool. After that, we have noise distortion. Now, if I toggle this off, you see, hey, what I should look like. But toggle that on, we just have some like warpiness. And uh, you can pull up this seethe rate, and it'll just sort of do its own warpy. If you want to get a little warpy on some clips, you got some nice little, I don't know, warpy distortion going on. After that, a really cool effect. Uh, being this paper edge effect. Toggle it off, you just got your little, your little logo. Uh, but toss paper edge on. Uh, I pulled up the border just a little bit. And yeah, it looks like you've got a nice like uh, ripped out more than like cut out paper edge. You can change um, how uh, jagged you want that, even some of the shadow, the roughness. Uh, especially if you are just tossing up a logo on screen, you want a little bit more separation and you don't want something like a drop shadow. Um, uh, you can always like crank this up to something crazy like 0.1. At that point, you will absolutely reach the edges of your frame. Then you can pull it back. So as thick as you want this, get it on there. Uh, really, really nice convenient effect. I did have to put this on the logo because it looks at the natural edges uh, of your clip. So like on footage, you wouldn't see this at all. But if it was something smaller than full frame, you will. Next, uh, repeat. That, that repeats an area. Um, you can change your source position if I just wanted to change like something in my frame, like this poster, the angle. We're doing some really interesting stuff. You can set the number of duplicates. You could animate this on for like a really cool transition. Oh, change the direction of this. Ooh, yeah, just a nice like tilized uh, repeat effect. Ooh, really slick as well. People will be able to do some really, really cool stuff with this right on the edit page. That's fun. Uh, after repeat, we have uh, just a shape circle. Hey, make a circle and have it on frame. Ooh, apply as a mask. Oh, oh that's pretty neat. Uh, we don't have a, a shape rectangle. We do have that DVE. Uh, but yeah, if you want a simple circle mask and you don't want to, you know, pay for mine, which makes sense, it's in there now. Um, border width. Okay, border width uh, increases the border, doesn't like add a border. But hey, if you want a circle, if you want a quick circle mask, it's in there now. Nice. Uh, after shape circle, we have slice, which by default, again, also does nothing. But if we come here, start to change position, we start to see, wow, we're doing some crazy stuff. We're like moving them in slices, which do like mirror repeat. Um, you can change, if I start to move those, change the rotation of them. Ooh, uh, change the rotation of the slice or, or of the shapes. Ooh, tricky. I like it. Ooh, I like it. Um, uh, extra shadows, extra copies if you want to get interesting. Ooh, transition on that way. Uh, shape, uh, no, slice is this effect. Really neat. Uh, two more. Um, one of the big Mimi ones. <laughs> uh, stretch region. That's interesting. Uh, by default, it isn't in the center. If I move this over. Ooh, wait, move this over. Yeah, move this over there. Slide this one out. Oh, this is just moving overall. Then we got some stuff. <laughs> uh, uh, stretch alignment, stretch a map. Ooh, that's interesting. <laughs> Ooh, follow animation. I don't know what this does, but I do want to dive in and see. Because that looks very interesting. Matt, ooh, is like where it's applying that. I, I want to dive into how they built this one because this is an effect I tried to do manually. Uh, but hey, now it's just in there by default. Just your your little Mimi face stretch deals. You can do it. And lastly, uh, nice little uh, watermark here. It's text by default, but like that uh, other effect, you can drag in a logo. Let me drag in the Resolve logo. Use the logo. And now it is this low opacity black and white logo. Um, you can turn up the saturation on that. Yeah, so it's coming through as color. If you want to watermark your stuff with this repeating um, image, not just like one main one, 
Super simple watermark effect. Nice. Lots of cool stuff. These transitions and effect didn't get, I believe, specifically called out in any of the release material. And if you jumped on the update, um, it might have been a little hard to uh, remember which ones were there before, which ones were new. So hopefully this is useful. Hopefully you found something you want to explore more or start using in your work. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.